everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm back to one of my favorite games of all time, Too Many Bones from Chip Theory. Specifically, I'm looking at Unbreakable, the latest uh, bigger box expansion standalone release for the game. And disclaimer that they sent me Unbreakable and pretty much all of the other new expansions in Gearlock, they've sent me a ton of stuff for this. But uh, today I'm just going to focus on Unbreakable only content, nothing you need from anything else. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also watch our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So like I said, I'm only using content from the Unbreakable standalone set today, so you can see uh, if you have never bought into Too Many Bones before, if this is where you might want to start out. I'm not going to go into as much detail as I have in previous playthroughs. I have so many plays of uh, Too Many Bones on the channel, so you can go and check any of those out if you want to see the game in more action. But one of the big things for Unbreakable is that now you play on uh, in the scenarios for this one on this board. It has the same 16 spots as every other board. But you have these little rock spaces in each of them, and many effects in the game can flip them to their lava side. And uh, basically, if you end your turn on lava, you take one true damage, ignoring all your defenses and such. So you want to you know, push or lower the enemies onto that, avoid getting there yourself. A lot of the tyrants uh, deal with in interesting ways. And I'm going against the quickest tyrants in the set. I might do another playthrough later of maybe the new campaign mode, because I haven't really done one of those before with one of the other uh, tyrants and show them off. But right now it's Rock and Roll, which is uh, two feuding uh, orcs or trolls, I should say. So let's zoom in for a second and see a bit about their uh, story and narrative. Since childhood, troll siblings Rock and Roll shared a passion for banging heads in the pursuit of power. The death of troll ruler Nam offered a vacuum atop the troll hierarchy, and Rock and Roll teamed up using their brawling prowess to take control of the underworld tribes. As the siblings' reign has continued, however, their jealousy has reared its ugly head, an ugliest only rivaled by the heads on the trolls' own bodies. So this is an interesting one in that it's going to be two tyrants on the board. And the biggest thing to note is right here, all baddies, including Rock, consider Roll to be an opposing unit, and Roll considers Rock to be an opposing unit. So uh, we want to let them kill each other and then, you know, slide in and finish off whoever uh, is left if we can. And like every other uh, game of Too Many Bones, you want to look at how many days you have to win seven in this case, and how much progress we need to fight them, fives. But hey, we've got some uh, gear locks to meet as well. Both of these are the ones included in the standalone Unbreakable set. So first we have Figment, who plays around a lot with time. And uh, to try to hopefully not mess up too many rules, because I always mess up something when I play Too Many Bones, I watched uh, Liz Davidson's excellent tutorial videos for both Figment and Gale, the two I'm going to be using. I uh, definitely recommend those. But yeah, so Figment's whole thing is that he has a bunch of dice that will, like, keep doing something every round until a certain round is reached. But then also with his backup plan and some of his other dice, he can change the round number, like advance towards fatigue or hold it off for a while. And he can also summon these temporary phase units to take some heat off of you, so he seems pretty cool. And the other one from this set is Gale, who's a, like, modified, kind of cybernetically augmented uh, gearlock. And she's got these three different sets of skills. But each of them has a uh, spot here that she can unlock that then will give a bonus to all the other ones. So she can go like heavy uh, movement based here and then also get gust rockets, which gives her diagonal movement, where she can get a bunch of attacking options and arm cannon, which gives her range combat. So yeah, she sounds uh, pretty neat too, but we'll see more about them as they go. I am playing on the middle difficulty, so they are, I forgot to slot it in, they are each starting with a single health. And we should get one training point to start. Gale's going to be my melee fighter, so I think she might want an extra dexterity. And for Figment, he's my range fighter, so I'd like him to have the ability to do a little bit more attack. Uh, there we go. So we'll raise his attack up one. And we'll get into some cool skills in a moment, don't you worry. And with that, let's get into the actual playthrough, and I'll explain more things that are new to Unbreakable as they come up. But let's see our day one encounter. Inscrutable Scribbles. As circuitous as the break is, Mirawat still managed to create a rough map of the area surrounding her compound. Unfortunately, she wrote it in her own personal shorthand, so it's extremely difficult to decipher. Let's see, obviously this blue part here is the land. Hmm, maybe decoding this isn't worth it after all. Daylight or candlelight is burning, and these tyrants wait for no one. Alright, so we got two options here, neither one combat-oriented. This one says, oh, the address is written right on the back of it, and we get a persistent effect. On day three and four, the party may draw an additional encounter card. Choose one and place the other either back on top or the bottom of the encounter deck. Uh, or... This is too much of a riddle to figure out. Not that anyone around here does riddles. Uh, so we could each get a loot card. And either way, we're getting two training points. I do like the ability, though, to um, <laughs> draw an extra encounter card and pick which one seems worse. So, yeah, we're going to go for the top choice and not get some loot right now. But we do get one out of our 
five progress and we do get two training points. And I'll slot that right under there to keep track of how much progress we have. So for training, uh, the two that I'm really looking at, so basically Gail's got movement and pushing based abilities over here. That's the movement protocol. She's got a defensive protocol over here, which as you can imagine is like defense and blocking up people. And she's got attack protocol over here. Now I can't train any of these until during a combat I get, uh, what is it, up to three bones and then she can use her mechanic protocol to remove one of these. And also you can't trade until you've gotten at least one of the other dice. And her sheet recommends getting a bit more dexterity and attack and then focusing on one major skill, but sidestep always being good. Because sidestep basically lets her uh, ignore an entire attack by a melee uh, unit, as you'll see if I get it when they end their turn next to her and like uh, try to attack her, she can just run away. But yeah, I do really, uh, I guess I'm feeling Mega Man today, I do really want to get her arm cannon. So the percussive blaster does one or two damage, but also pushes the enemy two in a straight line, which could get them uh, you know, out of the way or towards some lava or something. The Sonic Squall is a straight up damage, one to three of it. And the Disorientation Charge does some damage and also reduces their defense or uh, limits their defense for a little while. So of those, I think I like uh, Sonic Squall just for straight up damage for now. And then sure, since uh, I imagine that uh, Gale will be blocking for Figment sometimes, I'll go ahead and get the recommended sidestep too. If an enemy ends their move next to me before they get a chance to attack, I can spend this die if I've uh, made it active to move them any spaces away. And again, that's usually going to cancel their attack. As for Figment, I think he's going to want at least one more uh, dexterity so he can like do his range attacks and also do something else, even if it's just defense to try to build up bones. And then the one that really uh, excited me, partially because the name is Chrono Trigger, and that's my uh, one of my favorite JRPGs of all time, but also because it seems really powerful, is the Chrono Trigger die. And this one works uh, pretty much the same as all of the Staff Wielder red dice for Figment, in that the number is the round that this is going to like pop for a bigger effect. In this case, once I've played this at the start of each round, until we reach this round, we're going to deal one damage to the weakest baddie for free. But then on the exact round, like four or uh, five or three, it'll fire off dealing half the number rounded up. So like three would deal two to any baddie. So it's just a bunch of damage. And, you know, the best uh, defense is a good offense and just killing the guys before they can kill us. All right, so that takes care of encounter one and day one. So let's go on to day two and our first fight. Traffic wham. The baddies at the bottom of the ropes that lead from Mirawatt's compound to the rest of the break are extra antsy today, jostling for position so they can be the first to take a shot at their enemies. They're so antsy, in fact, that a stealthy gear like might be able to climb it down on notice, positioning himself for maximum damage dealing while their enemies bicker. The scrum is only getting worse, with the assembled creatures ramming into each other into an intractable mass of limbs, torsos, and angry faces. In their urge to give themselves a tactical advantage, they've created one for the good guys instead. All right, so this is a fight no matter what, and our choices are engage the tangled terrors. So let's see, it's a basic BQ. When creating the Q, all baddies are added face up. When placing baddies and gearlocks on the battle mat, the party may place them on any position of their choice, and we get a loot. Wait, so what's the bottom one? Push and shove your way through the crowd. Once on each of their turns, gearlocks by spend one dex to deal one true damage to an adjacent baddie. I mean, <laughs> I always take the more difficult because, you know, it's not really that difficult usually. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So we still get a nice advantage, and then we'll get some loot out of it and two more training. Oh my gosh, it is like a undertow where you just train so quickly, and I love it. All right, so if you haven't uh, played too many bones before, the BQ is equal to the day, which is two, multiplied by the number of gear locks, which is two, which is four points. And if you get up to five or more, you got to use fives. If you get above uh, 20, you have to use a 20. But here we've just got four level one baddies. All right, so we're going to put these baddies out first. We've got a bridge troll. One attack, one defense, four life, two initiative. Only abilities that sometimes they'll taunt and force you to attack them if you're adjacent. Yeah, I mean, really not anything too interesting. But they do have enough life that I think uh, shoving them in a corner makes sense. Remember, in this one, because of this uh, scenario, we can put them literally anywhere we want. And they are at two. And next, we've got a troglodyte whisper with the new lava flow keyword, which means whenever they are on a rock, like after moving or whenever, it becomes lava. Besides that, they have about the same stats as the troll and also melee. Oh, and this is important. We have a new type of baddie, which has only used when you're playing with the unbreakable scenarios, which is the break type here. And they are immune to lava damage. So this guy's not going to like hurt himself with his own lava. Where do we want him to be? Uh, maybe like up here, <laughs> just to spread out the uh, melee only people so far. If I get like a range person, I want to be right in my face. We can kill him right away. All right. And third is an orc miner. <laughs> Aren't they interesting? They have zero attack. But raiding means if there's any other orcs, any other blue types, which currently there aren't, they'll get a plus one attack for each one. And rage means once we hurt them, they get plus one attack. 
So they're content to just mine until we're ready to kill them. So with that in mind, I don't really mind them being, yeah, like right up in here, like even get in the uh, <laughs> the troll's way as he tries to reach us, maybe. All right, and they'd be after purple because of the tie. So far, no range people. Oh, here we go, a lava bat. Oh, and this one is super interesting. It's flame soak. Uh, so he's got three life, one attack, is range, only hits one target. Also breaks, won't be hurt by lava. And flame soak, I think they do on each of their turns, means they're going to take one hit point from a gear lock on lava and eat it like they're sucking the flame blood from them but if there's no gear lock on lava they're going to do it to a baddie which means they'll actually be like helping me kill the uh troglodyte over here but making themselves stronger and yeah i'd rather have uh two mid league people health wise than one with a ton of health so let's put this guy like <laughs> i don't know i want to have gale right next to them but also still be blocking stuff up so sure let's put them like right here and their initiative four and then we get to roll our initiative, see where we'll end up. Okay, so Gale can go first. Oh, and so can uh, Figment. Cool. Now, Figment's innate comes into play here, time adept. During battle step, after all initiative dice are rolled, you may re-roll Figment's initiative and use a new result. Also, after all dice are placed in the initiative meter, you may move Figment's initiative up or down one spot in the initiative meter. And then if he ever gets innate plus one, he can also move another unit's uh, spot. Pretty cool. And kind of like with the rounds, a lot of his other abilities like deal with initiative and hurting people above or below him or skipping people's turns. So lots of fun he can do with initiative. But for now, him and Figment going first. No problem with me. I'm oh, sorry, uh, him and Gale, I mean. So uh, Gale can be right here. And then he's not going to try to, I mean, he'll move, but he won't actually attack us. So he'll just kind of block people up. So let's have uh, Figment be there. And seems like a pretty nice little start. I, mean, I guess this immediately turns into lava, right? Like anywhere this uh, dude is hanging out. Right, so with that, let's uh, go and do Figment's turn first. So Figment's got three dexterity, two attack, one defense. Can get uh, definitely gets Chrono Trigger going. So let's do uh, two attack and Chrono Trigger for my three dexterity. Not going to move. And let's go ahead and target the lava bat. Yeah, I don't think Gale can kill it on its own. Uh, her own very easily so here we go and all right we got two damage and chrono trigger is going to go until round four and then on round four we can hit somebody for two instead of one it could be any baddie normally it's going to be the weakest and that goes into one of figment's locked slots by the way and then two damage to the bat they're down to one take that you blava sucker okay then next we have gale gale doesn't need to do a lot uh, does she We'll do two attack dice to make sure she kills a bat. Might as well roll a defense. And let's go ahead and uh, try to prep sidestep, because that'll become an active die and just hang out until we want to use it. And her target is the bat, of course. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, cool. We got sidestep prepped. Uh, we got a bone, and we've got way too much damage. And for Gale's backup plan, for one, she can roll the die removed from her backup plan to trigger this ability. If it rolls no bones, she can heal for one. If it rolls a bone, it goes back in her backup plan. So not too helpful until she's hurt. Uh, for two, she can do a true damage. For three, she can unlock one of her things. That's the main one I want to get to get the arm cannon I'm looking for. For four, she can change a skill die to uh, as a result of her choice, which you'll see matters a lot for her, what are they called? Major skill dice. That's right. Those are the ones we have to unlock. For five, she can do an awesome attack, uh, just like an attack bonus. And yeah, cool. But yeah, not going to use any bones yet. Want to uh, save up for unlocking one of her uh, major skills if she can. But four damage, way more than enough for uh, Bat Boy here. Get out of here, dude. That removes their initiative die. So next is the Troglodyte. Here he comes. So we can go here or here. Um, let's go this way, I think. And we'll turn that to lava as well. I don't think that the intervening places get turned into lava, but I'm not 100% sure about that. And yeah, no melee, can't attack. Okay, and then the Orc Miner is going to get right in. Uh, Figment's face, and then do nothing because they have no attack stat yet. <laughs> oh, actually, they do roll their defense, though. Which ends up being a 1. Oh, and sorry, the troglodyte should have gotten it as well. Also a 1. Okay, and then certainly the bridge troll will go here. Oh, and they got a 2. Alrighty. All right, with that, we advance to round 2, which means Chrono Trigger is going to deal 1 damage to the weakest enemy, which is our lava friend here, just takes out their 1 shield. All right, and uh, this is unfortunate, actually, I realize I should have put Figment after Gale, because now I can't get out of the way of the bridge troll attacking. But either way, Figment's going to try to kill the Lava Flow guy. So he'll do a two attack and one defense for his dexterity. All right, here we go. All right, oh, nice two defense. That should stop the troll from hurting us. And one damage to the Troglodyte, one bone. Brings him down to two. I think Gale can take care of that. And Figment got one blow to look at his backup plan. For one, we can do charge up, add a bone to your backup plan, and do not remove the bone when using this backup option. Oh my gosh! So he can just get 
Backup plan and backup plan and backup plan. Uh, time blip for two. Increase or decrease the round counter by one. Beautiful. Uh, fortunate discovery. Gets one of his consumables. And then this one is crazy. Be kind, rewind. Roll all dice in your backup plan, including those spent to activate this. And all uh, bones rolled this turn. And treat the roll results as dice rolled this turn. So you can actually put skills into his backup plan. And some of his dice let him do that with exhausted skills. And then like use them again. Heck yeah. But no question about it, he will certainly charge up and just get an extra one. Let's try to get uh, all the way to uh, his innate plus one or fortunate discovery. All right, and now it is Gale's turn, and uh, she needs to move up one to attack, so let's spend one dex for that. And then for her other three decks, she shouldn't need Sonic Squall, so let's just do her basic stuff. We'll save that for when we need to do a big attack on somebody. She's targeting the Troglodyte. Let's hopefully kill him. Oh, geez, maybe I should have done Sonic Squall. Okay, um, so that was one damage and two bones. Oh, hmm, that means it's only got one life left. Uh, but you know what? I really want to do Mechanical Protocol, so I could finish him off with uh, Vent Canisters for one true damage, but whatever. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and unlock the Arm Cannon to make sure that we uh, have that option forever. Which unfortunately means uh, <laughs> that the Troglodyte's attacking Gale. And she can't use her sidestep to get out of the way because it says they have to uh, move next to her. He was already there. And, oh, that was harsh. Two damage on her and one shield on him. She's down to three. All right, the Orc Miner is just mining away. Mining his own business because <laughs> uh, he's got a shield. And then the Bridge Troll will move here. Not roll defense, but will roll the one attack die. But Figment's got some shields ready to go. Wow, needed them both. So that takes out both of Figment's uh, armor there. All right, enemies, chill out there. We're going to round three. And Chrono Trigger's about to pop, but uh, first it's going to do one damage to our Troglodyte friend, leaving them with just uh, the one health left. All right, so Figment, what you up to? Figment could run away and let the Bridge Troll go toward Gale, um, but Gale couldn't use Sidestep because then the Bridge Troll would just attack Figment anyway. So yeah, let's just attack. Two attack and one defense is pretty much all that I got to do. But then who to attack? I guess the Troglodyte finish him off? Sure. Uh, okay, another bone, but Lava Friend over here is gone. And then, yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to charge up again because then next turn I can get a fortunate discovery or I can just go and unlock the innate plus one on the first <laughs> fight potentially, which seems like a good idea. All right, Gale, uh, should I just try to smack the heck out of this orc miner? I mean, sure, the attack is only going to go up to one anyway. So use two attack, one defense and our Sonic Squall, which can again do one, two or three damage. And this is how to be the uh, target you uh, targeted for the round. So you can like hit somebody else adjacent to you, but it doesn't have to be adjacent until I get the arm cannon going. All right, here we go. Let's actually get some defense this time. Oh, that looked like a good roll. That's five damage. I think Sonic Squall only has one face like that, but I won't complain. Get out of here, orc. And then cool. Gale does get one defense, although I kind of would have rather had bones. All right. And the bridge trolls is going to attack Figment for one damage. Which does get him down to four. And speaking of four, it is round four. Which means Chrono Trigger Pops deals half the round number printed on it, because it is round four, which is two, rounded up, is still two, to any enemy, so boom, get your uh, shields out of here. Right, but then what do I actually want to do here? I guess I have a chance to kill the guy if I just go all out, so let's do that. Wait, that's the wrong dice. That's more like it. And here we go. All right, good, two damage and a shield. He's down to two left. Gale might be able to do it. And if Gale kills the guy, I'll have wasted my backup plan. So let's do a fortuitous discovery now. See our options. All right, so the Kobold Claw can do true damage to a baddie who's ahead of you in initiative. Pretty cool. The Kobold Eye lets you exhaust up to two of your staff ones, the ones that are like round-based, or the Theoretician, the blue dice, to resolve them immediately instead of like waiting for the specified round. I don't really love that. And then Flash Rewind lets you revive a gear lock who is knocked out. That shouldn't be happening this early, right? I'm going to go for the true damage one. That seems pretty solid. And let's see if Gale can get the killing blow with two movement and two attack. Although I still won't be able to use sidestep, so maybe I'm not uh, making that effective as much as I should. Hey, there we go. You're dead. Get out of here, uh, troll bridge guy. And with that, we're getting some loot and two training points. Let's see the loot first. We got Secret Deodorant. 
So single use, place a poison three effect eye on yourself, yourself, and any baddie on the battle mat. Mm. Then day planner, place a bone into your backup plan, usable no more than once on each of your turns. Cannot be used on a turn in which you use your backup plan. So that one's not good for Figment. That's clearly going to go to Gale, and Figment can have the deodorant, I guess. Okay, then for the uh, level ups, I want to try to get Figment's attack to three, just so that like when he's not in any danger, he can really put the hurting on people. So let's do that for our first one. Good, didn't roll any bones, so bump that to two. And then for the other one, they did uh, recommend getting some green ones, and time jump seems pretty awesome. It lets you take an enemy on the initiative track uh, next to you, above or below, move them to the top of the initiative track. But if you do it when they're below you, then since it's your turn and like it continues from your turn, you skip their turn entirely, at least until next round, and you deal this much damage to them. So skipping an enemy's turn and dealing damage seems pretty great. And then the one schism that comes next lets you like do damage to a bunch of enemies. So that seems cool. Meanwhile, Gale, I'm definitely going to get the arm cannon I was going for. So what this does is you can put in your active slot. And once it's there, it boosts all of the uh, skills in its tree. So in this case, it makes all of these skills be able to hit any baddie like a range non-targeting effect uh, instead of just adjacent baddies. But then the combo I'm really trying to get going is that when it's on one of these sides, it also applies the indicated effect. So I uh, disable one and take away their attack for a turn. Uh, this is, what's that? That's, oh, no, that's disable. That's weaken uh disable which would like let them not have keywords but only if they're uh rank one baddies and then the big ones i want are bleed and poison two every time i use one of these dice also do that holy crud so yes that'll definitely be one of my uh, level ups and then with that in mind i'm just gonna go kind of ham and i'm gonna get percussive blaster which does one or two damage to an enemy usually has to be adjacent unless i have arm cannon going and then also pushes them up to two positions in any one direction Although that won't uh, get them like hurt by lava. Remember, lava only hits you at the end of your own turn. All right, so that's a lot of skills. I'll probably slow down on that and try to get my basic stats up and maybe go for like the Gus Rockets at some point that lets Gale move diagonally, which is awesome. Well, let's get to something I totally forgot the first day, my recovery. So uh, let's go ahead and rest or scout. And yeah, they both got hurt. So I think they're both just going to rest and get all their hit points back. And that gets their second out of five progress needed. And now we're about to go into day three and four. So we're going to draw an additional encounter card. Uh, pick one and put the other on the top or bottom of the encounter deck. Nice. We're going into day three. And our options are a weird one where we're mining. And we could get a lot of stuff. But we could get nothing. Or I haven't really looked at how bad it is. But it's automatically two training and loot. So I think we're going to do that one. But we'll leave this one on top. Because I want to get like a really nasty rock and roll focus encounter instead. All right. So now let's actually read what this one talks about. You underestimate my power. It was supposed to be easy. Sabotage Gavin Cog's mining facility and slink away into the dark. What we didn't realize is that the facility's dam mechanism was the only thing holding the surrounding lava at bay. And now we're stuck in a duel of the fates, get that reference, with these erstwhile miners. The saying goes that only an orc speaks in absolutes, but let's be honest, it's us or them. Looking around for safe haven, we see a patch of high ground that will keep us above the encroaching lava. Unfortunately, the remaining miners have come to the same conclusion and are already occupying the spot. Don't try it, one of them calls down to us. We've got to try. It's our only hope. We'll take this high ground, even if it costs us several limbs or at least three. Because we're going to have regular baddie points, which is going to be six. And including as many break type enemies as possible. I'm guessing that means we just flip until we get one of those. Okay, all baddie range starting positions are high ground and cannot become lava. The remaining positions are low ground. While on high ground, gear locks may reroll one die during their select and roll dice phase. And baddies will reroll one bone rolled each turn. After a gear like is attacked while on low ground, their position becomes lava. At the end of any turn in which a baddie on low ground attacks an adjacent gear like on high ground, they swap positions. And then we can swap positions for two bones. All right. Okay, so we're looking for our first uh, five. There we go. Break type baddie. And then our first one break type. There we go. Because we're on day three times two for two gear locks is six. And you always go for the highest values you can. All right. So the five is going to be a Boglodite. Ugh. Oh, this guy sucks. Eruption means that when uh, every he attacks you, which is melee, uh, his target spot becomes lava. And pollute means that every uh, gear lock who's not on lava takes one damage or no, gets one poison uh, applied to them automatically. Now, I assume they go in order. So if he erupts somebody, they won't get polluted. But maybe I'm wrong. And gosh, three attack. Yikes. Let's turn that lava back. But he's only got five life and one defense. So it shouldn't be like impossible to just smash him real fast. And then I think, yeah, this is the same troglodyte uh, scurrier again. Oh, wait, no, this guy's a little different, isn't he? Uh, yeah, this one doesn't have the defense, but has more life. I'd rather have, yeah, <laughs> this guy doesn't ever build up defense. 
But also melee, also over there. So we can make sure they don't attack us, except for a stupid <laughs> uh, guy over here doing his poison thing. But if Figment just, like, focuses down a three attack on him, hopefully he can die pretty quickly. Let's roll for our initiative. Ooh, Figment rolled a one. Let's use uh, his innate to re-roll. Get a four. Okay. So we are definitely doing this. The new uh, skill die I just got. Remember, it lets us pick an enemy um, adjacent to us in initiative order, move them to the top of the initiative, but then because the turn continues from wherever Figment's die is, their turn will get skipped and they'll take damage. Uh, with that, I bet we can kill that guy before he ever gets to do anything really nasty. I mean, maybe we can. We'll see how things go. So with that in mind, Gale starts on a melee position this time. And Figment here, and this guy's all lava up. Yeah, let's just try to totally... Uh, forget the <laughs> thing about uh, the back row and all that and just try to kill this guy ASAP. So Figment's first. Now, still only has three dexterity. That's a problem. Um, we're going to use time jump to skip the guy's turn. And I guess Chrono Trigger will still hit the guy. Sure. So that and an attack. I need to get more dexterity for him. And uh, no defense yet. All right. Come on. Okay. Oh, I got the, in some ways, best Chrono Trigger result because we'll do three damage in round five if it's uh, still going at that point. I did not get any damage on the guy there, though. But I did get one for time jump. So he goes ahead of me, but he does take one damage. So he's got four left, and he's not going to get to roll his defense before Gale goes. We just got to kill him. All right, and Gale is indeed up. Hmm. All right, so I think I want to do two attack. And I could do percussive blaster and sonic squall. Not worry about arm cannon yet. Um, but then only use them as needed based on how well I roll here, right? I think that kind of covers my bases in the best possible way. All right, here we go. Oh my god, yeah, see, this is why this is great. <laughs> I'm just going to put those dice right back and use them again next turn. Because that got me dead with just those. Gosh, I've rolled some <laughs> good attacks here. Bye. And yeah, hey, Troglodyte, we didn't forget you, buddy. Uh, we'll go ahead and move you there. And uh, I guess you'll turn that to lava, too. Hi. Oh, wait, wait, I did forget uh, Figment could have used, uh, what was it, charge up to get another. There we go bone okay it's round two uh figment is gonna automatically do a damage to that guy thanks to chrono trigger and yeah i don't know if uh i'm gonna like try to get some more bones i guess i'll roll these the uh kobold claw has quite a few like yeah two sides with red bones that you have to use so i don't want to use that until i actually like want to do something with it so we'll just roll these three targeting the uh troglodyte we're kind of hoping for the bones to come. Yeah, but, oh man, did we kill him? No, we didn't kill him. He has one life. Yeah, he's one life left. Awesome. And then, hmm, I could get another Fortunate Discovery. Or I could use Charge Up to get a bone. I could specifically not have Gale try to kill the Troglodyte. Oh no, but then the stupid, uh, <laughs> the stupid, uh, Chrono Trigger is going to kill him no matter what. All right, so never mind. Might as well, uh, go ahead and do another Fortunate Discovery. And... I actually want the Flash Rewind. I, I don't like Cobalt Eye as much until like I get a bunch of reds or blues. All right, and then Gale. Jeez, I don't know, dude. Uh, <laughs> okay, he's got four dexterity and the guy's not next to him. So instead of moving, I'm just going to do all of these and see what happens. Okay, ooh, I got two bones. That won't actually help me at all. Um, yeah, if I'd gotten three, I could have done Mechanical Protocol. But hey, I do have Arm Cannon, which makes all of my blue dice be able to attack at range, uh, which means... <laughs> I'll do one damage to the guy, killing him at range and also disabling him if he wasn't dead. But he is dead. So that was, yeah, that was the fastest fight ever. Get out of here, dudes. And I'll get us our third progress out of five. Two training points and another loot. Heck yeah. What have we got? Soot Melange. We're getting some Dune references. If you have two or fewer hit points, heal yourself for five hit points. Whoa. Otherwise, heal yourself for two. And Gearlock Gorp. <laughs> During the recovery phase, if you search for better loot, also heal yourself to full hit points. That's pretty cool. Um, for now, yeah, it doesn't matter too much, I guess. Gale could probably use the healing more. Sure. And yeah, neither of us got hurt that time. So let's just uh, level up some stuff. All right, for Figment, I definitely want another dexterity because as you saw, it was tough for me to use everything. And then maybe Schism. So what Schism does is when you use it, everybody ahead of you in the initiative order takes this much damage. So Figment would want to place himself like at the bottom of the initiative. But then he could still use time jump. Oh no, I guess if he's at the very bottom, he couldn't use time jump to skip somebody's turn. Well, you can use time jump first and then use schism. I mean, two damage on every baddie. It's kind of crazy, but it's also not very focused. Hmm. I could do another staff one instead. Chrono buffer gives us buff HP every turn until it gives us more on the turn it fires or the round. Oh wait, then I forgot this one. Chrono seer gives us bones every turn. Um, and then a bunch of bones when it fires off which could help both of us get to an A plus one, help Gale unlock some more major skills. So yeah, let's do Chrono Seer for the other one for now. Meanwhile, Gale, 
Um, I could get Disorientation Charge, which remember does some damage and also lowers defense, but could uh, do a lot more with the Arm Cannon. Seems like I should, right? Just to kind of complete the set. And then with all those, let's raise Dexterity to 5, also give her more movement options. And then we can try to get like Attack and Defense up next. And let's not forget this time, they uh, can eat Scout. I don't want to go for new loot, so let's see. Got, oh, I got a 6 for one of them. Now, in a short two-player game like this, we should never hit 20. So let's see what the five on top is. Troll Cave Smasher. Okay, he heals one each time. But he's a melee. Honestly, I think I'm okay with that on top. because We can really mess around with him quite a bit. And then, okay, Figment gets a three, so only a level one. Let's see what's this going to be. It's a dork. <laughs> a dork. Give me a break. Uh, sword Breaker, rating we already saw. No defense, only three life. What's Sword Breaker? Ooh, any turn he actually hurts us, not just hitting a defense, but actually hurts us. We have to exhaust one attack die. That sounds like it could be annoying. He's going on the bottom. <laughs> Although, yeah, I just don't think our defense is strong enough to ensure that he's not going to get a hit through. And that right, takes us to day four out of a maximum of seven. And this is the last day we get to look at two. Uh, here we go. We're going to get a, a tyrant specific one and then that mining one from before. You know, funnily enough, I want to do the tyrant specific one because, again, this one, if we have bad luck with our attacks, basically we're like attacking the rock mining, like I said. If we roll poorly too high or too low, one damage or four damage, we create lava instead of getting ore. So there's a decent chance we won't get to two level ups. And here we definitely get two level ups and either a trove loot, which I don't know if we'll have time to unlock, or a regular one. So yeah, let's go see what the tyrants are doing. And this one, honestly, I'm going to put on the bottom. I don't want to do this one. I mean, as nice as it is, and I actually have to like fight anything and have the potential to die. This underground road breaks off into two rugged forks up ahead. There's only time on this journey to spy out the strategy of one of these troll siblings. The choice on this divergent path will determine which one is scouted and which one will remain an enigma. Rock uses his brute strength to manipulate the breaked lava, smashing up rocky floors to torch his enemies. Roll survives on her cunning, swiping traveler's gear and repurposing it to her own ends. Each sibling's followers have learned from their leader, and whichever way is chosen, a fight with enemies using their respective sibling's tactics is likely. The siblings do share one thing in common. They both smell awful, so there's no deciding things that way. All right, so the slightly better one, I mean, if it's better, <laughs> to get Trove loot, is Hard Rock Cafe. So either way, it's the regular baddie queue. At the start of each round, we're going to roll Rock's Tyrant die for uh, them. Blast Heat, each gear like on Lava has to exhaust a die. Okay, <laughs> or face melter, every position occupied by gear block becomes lava. So we'll have to be moving a lot. That one's definitely rough. Okay, and then drum roll, please. At the start of each round, roll rocks, tyrant die. Oh, we can get loot from her sweet merch. Was it a her? Which one was it? Rock his, roll her. Okay, roll is her. So yeah, roll will give us merch or take it away. Or each gear lock from his remnant is die from their backup plan. That's kind of annoying for trying to get to innate plus one. Hmm. I actually, I'm going to go for the harder, quote unquote, harder one, I guess. Hard Rock Cafe. And that's going to be, I want to see the distribution here. So face melt if it actually makes lava. Oh, it's 50-50. So hopefully we get a lot of the, oh no, is it more than 50-50? Oh, geez, it's only, yeah, one third of the time they won't turn our position into lava. We're going to have to be running our butts all over the place. Maybe I don't do that. Let me see what the distribution is for the other one. All right, so giving us something is one out of six. I kind of expected that. Uh, taking something from us is two out of six. Stealing our backup plan is three out of six. <sighs> okay, I'm still going to do roll instead. So it's day four times two, eight. So we got one, five, and three ones filling out the board. The five we already saw, Biggin healing himself a lot. High attack values, but not uh, too fast. Then our first one, it's another lava flow one. Oh, geez, this is going to be the easiest thing ever. <laughs> Smoke screen says while they're on lava, they can't be targeted. And lava flow means that they're always on lava. But they only have one life. And remember, all of Gale's uh, blue dice we've been building up do not require targeting. So she'll just shoot this guy through the smoke screen literally immediately, I think. Well, they only has one. Well, they only has one attack, so I guess we don't need to rush it very much. Yeah, it's uh, still melee. Okay. Oh, we got another bat. Blind bat. Okay, also smoke screen. What's molten bath two? Okay, that means it heals two if it starts on lava on a turn, and it heals two if it moves onto lava. But so far, except for that guy who we can kill right away, nobody makes lava, so might be okay. Especially if Gale goes before purple and just smokes him. Oh yeah, a ton of melee, so they're just gonna be like right in my face from the beginning. Okay, and last we have a troll rock eater. Reach. 
Reed says at the start of this unit's turn, the closest unit that's not already next to them, opposing unit, I should say, gets placed next to them and on lava if possible. So they just like grab us up there. And with this guy being lava flowing next to them, that's not great. But at least he is very, very slow. All right, let's see where we are. Okay. Big Pigment's going to reroll. Um, okay, there we go. And then could go up or down one. But no, we don't want to do that, right? Yeah, well, I'll just go first and try to kill him. Right, so we want to be away from uh, this guy as much as possible, but then also potentially get something nasty on that guy early. Um, uh, if Gale is here, the bat will move right next to him. Maybe I should have, like kill the bat early, but then this guy will get me. Unless, ooh, if Gale can get her sidestep going, she can sidestep out of this guy's way. The troll might still pull her in and onto the lava, but that's not the worst. I mean, there's a lot of things I want to do all at once, but let's try that. And then let's have Figment over here for now, I think. Let's start of round one. Let's see if we're robbed or whatever. Uh, yes. Oh, geez. No, that's the one that uh, each gear lock draws a loot. Yay. All right, so Gale gets safe cracker. Instantly open any trove loot. Well, that'll be a good one to give back uh, if we get robbed next. Okay, and Figment recyclables. Choose any loot from the loot discard pile and add it to your loot area. Well, whatever. There isn't any yet. Okay. So that was uh, nice. Okay, but now Figment's going. So we got four dexterity. I'd love to get... Well, maybe not. Maybe we don't do Chrono Seer this time because the uh, the bosses is going to be stealing <laughs> uh, bones anyway. But maybe we do Chrono Trigger and then... Oh, Time Jump doesn't... Hold on a second. I just realized by putting Figment first, I can't do Time Jump. So let's... Remember that he can put himself up or down one. I'm going to have Gale go first and then that'll give me the ability to do a Time Jump on somebody. All right, Gale, you got five dexterity. I want sidestep for when the big one comes by. What are my chances of actually getting it? Two thirds, okay. Now I might get arm cannon going. And I could just go like wild. But no, I mean, the bat's like right next to me. I should probably... Oh, I do want to have at least one to kill the one guy. Um, and maybe... Yeah, nobody has uh, high defense or low defense enough. I mean, this will reduce the defense a bit. Um, I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> if I get lucky, it could be awesome. There's also a chance I won't, like, use any of these. Come on, come on. Oh, yes! Yes! Every one of these blue is going to apply bleeding. And they all did damage. Oh, my gosh. This is great. <laughs> and I got my dodge. Okay, so I'll put that in the active slot for when somebody comes next to me. Um, which of these is the weakest? This is the one that pushes somebody up to two positions. Um, yeah. This one lowers their defense by that much. Okay, I'm going to use this one on... This guy, so that's one damage, and his defense value be lowered by one. Does not matter because he's already dead. Oh, I'm sorry. That should be lava, which does matter because of the reach. Okay, now I'm gonna do. Should I put? I could bleed this guy, right? And then he would be pretty easy to finish off. Oh, never mind. He has recover one, so I kind of want to like this go big on him. So let's do this. I'm gonna do two damage and bleed to the blind bat, which means that literally when its turn starts, it'll die. I <laughs> like that. There we go. And then, sure, let's do this to the troll rock eater. So I'm going to do one damage to him, and I can push him up to uh, two spaces in any direction. Let's put him here so he can't pull other people onto lava. And if he doesn't move, he'll be taking damage at the end of his turn. So I like that in multiple ways. And that was one damage and bleeding. And holy crud, we will never see a turn like that again. Technically, this is still active, but it does nothing because all my blue dice are used. All right, now it's Figment. Ugh, I don't even know what to do here. That was just so good. <laughs> Okay, with that being the case, let's go ahead and do Chrono Trigger and Chrono Buffer. I don't need to do Time Jump because it would affect the bat. I want to wait until it'll affect uh, somebody nastier. So I guess just two attack, right? On, he's got three life left. See, so yeah, even one damage would be enough to kill him, So which actually means that the Chrono Trigger will probably do it. So let's go ahead and do two attack. On, let's uh, target the Troll uh, Cave Smasher. Oh, no, but he recovers one on his turn. So no, let's actually attack the, uh, the guy who's already poisoned or bleeding and all that. Whoa! Okay, we got uh, we got bones for a little while. We got free damage for a little while. But then, yeah, more damage than I expected here. Yep, that troll is dead. Bye. I guess you didn't really need the poison. Or the lava. That was kind of a waste. Oh, well. All right, and then the blind bat. Please to death. Bye. <laughs> All right, but then big boy over here. He's like, oh, I'm going to crush you. And then I go, oh, I'm going to run away. <laughs> but he does still get to roll his one defense. Oh, he's taunting means, whoops, we can't attack anybody else if we're not, uh, if we're next to him. Wah, wah, whatever. Okay, so we go into round two, which means Chrono Trigger does one damage to him. And Chrono Seer gives one of them a bone. It has to be the weakest gear lock, but we both have five hit points. And I think I'll say Gale. 
If I can get Gale up to an 8 plus 1, then she can lock in one of these master dice when she rolls really good side, like the bleeding one or the two poison one, and then it'll always start the fight with my blue dice being ranged and amazing. So that's like kind of what I want to go towards. All right, and now it's uh, Gale's turn. And yeah, she'll move up one. Yeah, she kind of uh, did all her stuff already, so she'll just do basic dice. She has one dexterity left. All right, decent. So it's down to two life, and she got one shield. We're definitely not <laughs> going to make anything bone-wise happen here, are we? Yeah, because I'm going to be mean and <laughs> have Figment use time jump and three attack on the troll guy. I'm sorry. This is just nasty. Oh, actually, we missed on the time jump, so he takes two damage. Oh, which is all he had left. Never mind. He's still dead. Okay, bye. Yeah, we can't do anything with two bones, so it's not going to matter. So, woof, we destroyed those people too. But really, uh, <laughs> that first turd of Gale was crazy. And yeah, nobody got hurt, so we can scout again or trade in loot. Oh, that's right. And oh, crud, wait. I didn't roll the die. Hold on. Forgot to see if we lost anything. What? Are you? That is. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'll take it. This is our fourth loot for each of us, unless one of it's heavy. Uh, burnt Trove Map. Oh, shuffle a special encounter the Ebonite Doorway into your encounter deck if it's not already been shuffled in or completed. Uh, sure. Unfortunate Discovery. Select one of your consumable dice and play. Let's just use both of these right away. All right, so we're shuffling that into our encounters. And we'll give Gale her one consumable die, which is a self-coder. It can get her some nice bones, but then also it gives her re-rolls of dice in her active slots, like mainly for her master skills, so... Not too bad if I get a cruddy result with, uh, like, my arm cannon or whatever. All right, and then we're getting... Pick this one. So we're getting another loot, so we'll each have four again, even though we just spent one. And two training points, all right? So the loot, thick bandage. If you have lost hit points this round, heal yourself for four. Otherwise, heal yourself for two. Seems like it'll be more likely to be Gale getting hurt again. Although she already has the soot... I mean, she... Yeah. Well, whatever. It's fine. And then battle yo-yo. If you're adjacent to two or more baddies, roll one attack die and deal its damage to an adjacent baddie. Does that cost dexterity? We can use it three times. Okay, hold on. Never mind. That's going to Gale since she'll more, be more likely to be next to stuff. And by the way, I'm storing them up here. So uh, Figment's got the poison himself and somebody else one, the uh, recover and search for better loot one, the get a loot back from the discard, which we actually have some in the discard now, and uh, healing with the bandage. And Gale has, ooh, that's right, get bones. Let's try to do that next. Uh, heal herself, open a trove loot, wah, wah, whatever, and battle yo yo. And we got to do two level ups. Let's see, I think maybe no dexterity for Figment. And the suggestions say get at least one of the phase dice. So when you use this, it puts out, where is it? Uh, this little phase with, with the basic die only single hit points. And it does go away at the beginning of your next round, but enemies will treat it as people. And the cool thing is you get to put it on any position on the mat and then swap with it. So you can basically teleport Figment away from danger, which certainly seems useful. And then meanwhile, Gale, what do you want? Maybe she should get an extra defense, <laughs> just because at some point we might actually get hurt. So, okay, we'll do that. And then it wouldn't hurt to have one more attack either, would it? So now she can have crazy turns even once she's used all her blue stuff. And that's our fourth progress. We got to do one more going into uh, day five. Then we can fight next turn if we want, uh, theoretically. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's uh, scout real quick. So one of them gets a six. We'll do a five again. And then the other one gets a two. We'll do a one again. So got a six life sword breaker. Nah, that's one where, like, they take away your attack. Nope. And uh, what's the one? Eruption. That means they turn. I mean, it's only got two life. Oh, and it's, yeah, whatever. We can kill this guy in, like, two seconds. That's the one that uh, turns its target's uh, tile or location into lava. But he'll die in no time, so I don't care. All right, so we go to our fifth encounter. Are you freaking kidding me? Is this really it? <laughs> they just want me to play this. Okay, whatever. We're going to play it. We're going to go ore mining. They will not stop putting this card in front of my face. A feast or famine. What a find! We've come across a cache of untapped ebonite, one of the rarest and most valuable minerals in Daylor. Tough and beautiful, this abyssal black rock which fetch a high price among the Molnir, or we could just keep it and use it to craft our own equipment. A little excavation reveals why this particular vein is untouched, however. Its narrow, unstable shelf sits atop a river of lava. Still, this opportunity is too good to pass up entirely. Let's take what we can and skedaddle before this place crumbles. Ebonite's melting point is a lot higher than ours. So it is a fight, theoretically. Hi ho, hi ho! It's to the break we go. Do 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 do. No BQ. <laughs> so we can target and damage rock chips. Uh, we must apply all results rolled on the selected dice. We can't like choose to do less damage because we roll well uh, badly. If a gear like deals, deals two or three damage to a rock, they get one ore. Place a hell chip in their exhausted tra area to track. If they deal one or four more damage, the rock becomes lava, and the gear like must exhaust all attack dice that dealt damage that turn. The party can choose to end this encounter at any time, but must end it after round five. When the encounter ends, each gearlock not KO'd may trade their ore for one of the following rewards. 
Oh, we are like each individually getting ore. If we get five, we get an unlocked trove <laughs> loot and two training. But either way, we're going to get one uh, uh, progress. So let's, let's do the best we can. I don't know. Although I am realizing the nice thing is here, I should be able to get a ton of uh, bones to hopefully get both of them to their nay plus one before the boss fight. So in that sense, at least this is good. Oh, I don't know why I'm rolling. I could just move. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Whatever. Boop. Okay, so the sweet spot is two to three damage, um, which means with two dice on average, you know, you have one, two, and one bone. So it's a pretty good chance we'll get it. Three dice. I don't know which one is better probability wise. Now, the nice thing for Gail, at least, is that she can use her blue dice, even if her attacks all get exhausted. And all my guys have three attacks. I guess I should go for two dice instead of three, because if they exhaust three dice, then they're just done. All right, so Gail's got five dexterity. Uh, let's do two attack dice, uh, two defense dice, and let's just go and roll the self-coder. Just try. Oh, well, yeah, I guess it's trying to get the bones, right? Because I just want to get to an eight plus one. Well, but nah, like I said, I'd rather not use that if I don't have to. Is two dice right? Ah, I wish I could. Hmm. However, let's just try it. So we'll attack that rock. And okay, we got two. Yay. And dang it, two shields. I don't want that. Well, I can just reroll it next turn. All right. So that, what happens? So the rock doesn't go away. We just get one ore. Yay. Meanwhile, Figment's going to get the free uh, bones thing going. And yeah, not going to use one of their attack. Although still, maybe like three attack is better. And attack that one, I guess. All right. And oh, okay. We're okay. Three. Oh, good. We got a bone. Awesome. And we got, yes, we're going to charge up. So at the start of round five, which after that we have to stop, we're going to get three bones to either of us. That's got to get us to the innate plus one. And cool, we got three attack for a thingamajig. And he will, of course, use his charge up to get a second one. Cool, cool. Now it takes us into round two. All right, and Gale. Gale, Gale, Gale. Um, still going to do just two. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, we get a free, uh, what's my call it, bone to either since we have equal health. That'll be Gale. And then going to go ahead and do two attack and two defense again, saving. Is there a bone on sidestep? You know what? I'll roll sidestep just in case I get a bone because it can't hurt me to. Oh, that's right. It said I have to use it. So I guess, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking away the uh, defense dice I had as I can do at any time. Um, okay, good. I got three damage. I got two bones. Awesome. And yeah, we get another ore. So that's two. I think that's, that's is that? Yeah. So now we'll get, uh, Gale will get at least one training point. Meanwhile, Figment. I don't know, man. I'm going to have him roll three dice. Let's see what happens. Because <laughs> um, he can still at least be getting bones. Is there anything else I want to be rolling? Chrono Trigger doesn't have any bones on it. I guess Time, ju time Jump does. So I might as well roll Time Jump in case I get a bone. And then, of course, uh, one defense. All right. Okay, hey, three. Oh, that worked out great. Rolling three dice. Okay, so that gets him another ore. And yeah, three bones. Heck yes. I don't think I can use Charge Up to get... Because I can't fit six bones. So I think I need to like have an extra bone rolled. So charge would get me like a bone that I can't fit anywhere. And then I can't use another backup plan. So I think I have to wait for the next round. Maybe. I don't really know. Okay. Round three. Uh, the staff will give Gale a bone. Throw Gale a bone. And Gale will keep doing two and two. Because again, I'd like her to have an attack. Even if I miss that can like go with the blue dice, maybe. Attack in north of her. Oh, we got it. And dang it. Come on. I want actual bones. Although the, the thing's kind of taking care of that, right? The automatic bone thing. So I can scale a third ore. And then, yeah, sure. Figment will roll the phase ghost in case it gets a bone. And yeah, that stuff. The three dice uh, seem to work okay last time at least. Yes, okay. <laughs> We're getting lucky. But, okay, we didn't, no, no bones. Darn it. Darn it, darn it. So again, I don't think I can. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I can do the backup plan yet. Well, that takes us to round four. Four, and I guess we'll give it to Gale again. Maybe I give it to Figment. Now nah, let's give it to Gale. Gale's uh, keeping it going. Here we go. Where are you going, extra die? Go in there and yay. Okay, we got it. No, no freaking bones though, but it's okay. Gale, well, one of us will get a ton of bones in a second. But Gale did get four ores, so now two training points are guaranteed. All right, Figment, don't let me down, buddy. Don't let me down. You son of a gun. Oh, we've got three attacks. So that was good at least, but I want the bones. All right, so we go to round five. Which means this fires off and somebody gets three bones. I don't even like know how to mark that. Like, do I do this? <laughs> I forget how too many bones works. Yeah, so I looked at the rule book and it says you can hold up to five at the end of your turn. So I think since Gail's turn hasn't happened yet, she can get the three, maybe. So either way, so I think then that I'll still have two left over right here after she flips to that side. 
And then with that, she's definitely going to roll Arm Cannon because if I get a good thing, and actually I'll roll Self Decoder as well. If I can get a good thing now, I can lock it in and just start the next battle with Arm Cannon ready to go. And she doesn't actually care about the ore. So yeah, you know what? Let's roll uh, two defense dice then and one attack, whatever. So I'm attacking an ore. Whoops. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not the Arm Cannon I want. And I didn't get the thing that lets me reroll it. Oh, but I did. That's right. I already used a bone option this turn, a backup plan, because there is uh, the. What is it? I think it's wind power. Let's her change or reroll dice. So, yeah, this is round five. She doesn't get another ore. That's kind of whatever. Oh, dang it. That's right. A fifth ore would have unlocked a trove chest. Well, that was stupid, but too late. Okay, meanwhile, Figment has to frigging get this stupid thing. Uh, so, one. Um, and the three attack. Is there anything else I can roll that has bones? Oh, the flash rewind has a cobalt claw. Has all right. Let's let's put the cobalt claw. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Throw me a bone here, people. Throw me. Okay, I got too much attack, but I got a bone. Yes. And I don't have to use that because I didn't get a red. Beautiful. Oh wait, I said I do have to use everything I rolled, so I think that is exhausted. Oh well. The thing I really care about is that I got his innate plus one. Although, what was his? He can use a uh, move a monster up or down in the initiative one spot, which is, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so we both got four. So we get one loot we can't hold and two training points. Then we're ready to go to the boss battle. Okay, recharge. We set up to three loot in any loot areas back to their maximum uses. Ooh. Yeah, I can have, like, Gale battle yo-yoing and day planning and then get him back. Okay, so I'm going to throw away the uh, the safe crackers since we're not going to get a uh, trove loot. And comfy hiking boots. After adding yourself to the battle mat, move your initiative die to the top of the initiative meter. I think Gale would want that too, right? Because Figment can already do that kind of stuff. Well, actually, never mind. I am going to give it to Figment because Figment can't use the innate plus one to move a tyrant in the initiative track. But then uh, he could get to the top, which would let him use, what is it, a time jump to move the tyrant and skip their turn and do damage to them. Let's get rid of the gear lock gorp for the comfy hiking boots. Then we'll still have recyclables. Heck, we could like battle yo-yo three or twice, use recharge to get it back to three, use recyclables to get recharge back, battle yo-yo two more times, use recharge to get it back to three. <laughs> there could be a lot of yo-yoing going on is what I'm saying. But yeah, we have five progress. We're going to day six of seven and we're going to fight, baby. Oh, wait, but first we got to level up and scout, level up and scout. Uh, oh, geez, I got a lot of stuff. I think getting them both to a six health is never a bad idea because you know how like Tyrant's going to suddenly smash you. Although I'd love to get some more skills. This is a shorter scenario. I think Figment might want another defense. Oh, got to roll it again. There we go. Okay, so now Figment's pretty balanced. Meanwhile, Gale. These ones are healing ones, by the way. In all honesty, I think I might just take her to six dexterity, right? Because she can always do five, plus having some movement or getting some blue dice in the mix. That seems like maybe a good thing. Right, but yeah, let's go to the big boss fight. So we will rock you, shaky ground. Okay, BQ points. Uh, for a party of three, would add a five point. For a party of four, add two five points. But instead, we're in day six. Yeah, day six. So it'll be 12 BQ points, so two fives, two ones. Um, and we got to use as many uh, troll enemies as possible. And then rock will be on top, and then roll will be on top of rock. I'd say they're both going to be out. We only have them and the two fives out at first. And then we're going to have four positions as lava, and everyone, including rock, consider roll to be an opposing unit, and roll considers just rock to be an opposing unit. So we want to make sure that roll can get to rock as often as possible. And we got to defeat everyone to win. Okay. Now let's see. Rock has hard rock. At the start of Rock's turn, his position becomes Rock. Interesting. And recover two. Rock gains two hit points at the start of his turn. Yuck. And he's the one who... Oh, this is different than what we had the other thing. Okay, Blast Heat. Until the start of Rock's next turn, Lava deals plus one true damage. And Face Melter. Every position that is occupied by Roll or a Gear Lock becomes Lava. All right. I mean, Rock really doesn't like Roll. They both got eight life. Yeah, so far, I want to kill Rock first. <laughs> Although, that's right. Roll only cares about Rock. That's okay. Okay, then for Roll... Got Crowd Surf. For Roll's movement, she moves as many positions as possible, taking the shortest route possible to an available rock position adjacent to the strongest opposing unit. Oh, so that's usually going to be uh, rock, but I got to not hurt him too fast. Roll can move through other units, and each unit she moves through is dealt one damage. Okay, she doesn't move if there is no available place. Roll can only lose hit points from lava damage, fatigue, and damage dealt by other red baddies. Oh my gosh. So we can't... Okay. So we got to let them kill her. Her, we're going to okay, and then yeah, she's still like giving us loot or taking away loot. <laughs> I don't even know how to deal with this. Well, let's try it out. Oh, pretty important this time. Let's do some scouting. Okay, level one. 
And level five. Oh, that's right. It's only going to matter if they're a red. So yeah, those guys won't be used anyway. So level five won't be used anyway. So whatever. <laughs> so we're building the batty Q. Uh, do. Oh, is it blue? No, no, it was red. It was red. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay, there's one guy. Looking too close. And there's another one. All right, so we'll have those two. And uh, geez, okay, I got to go to the discard for the level ones. All right, here we go. We got two fives with two ones underneath. And then who was first? It was rock and then roll. Okay. So that means the roll comes out over here with eight life. And we got lava everywhere. And a rock's over here with his own eight life. Oh, but she's a three. He's a four. And then we got the troll cave smasher again. How you been? I mean, he'll be right next to roll, but he goes after her. So she'll have already like rolled over to rock. And yes, rock and roll puns abound here. And then what is this guy? Oh, he's got reach and recover two. Troll dark alesmith. Six. Oh, God, that guy's nasty. Ooh, but actually reach is the closest opposing unit. So there's a decent chance we can get him to like pull roll over to him. And yeah, I'm definitely feeling like we let Roll die as quickly as possible. Because can't, we can't really do anything about her. <laughs> Whereas, like, if we kill the fives and kill the ones, like, Rock by himself is not going to stand up to us forever. All right, here we go. Uh, Gale's at a five. Okay, so is this how we want it? You know, Figment wants to be below Gale. Because then he can use his, like, skip a turn thing on... Who's that? That's Rock. And then Figment can also move somebody else up or down. But not a tyrant. Um, oh, I guess my comfy hiking boots are not actually going to be good here. <laughs> uh, that's okay. There's something to throw away if Roll throws stuff away for us. I think I want to move Reach Dude before Roll. Because right now she's two away from him. So he can like put her over here. And that way she'll like have to go through them to get to Rock. Because she's going to be like rolling all over the place to get to him. And I don't really want that killing us. And then yeah, Figment can be like over here, I guess. And that should mean Gale can be, like, here. Um, although then the Troll Cave Smasher will attack Gale because it's the weakest of the two adjacent. But no, uh, that's right. He, he's last anyway, so hopefully he'll be dead, number one. And also, Roll won't be there. All right, so I, I think this is what we got. All right, so Gale is first. <laughs> we probably want to have Sidestep ready. Um, we got six. I want to see if I can get this going. But maybe not actually use those yet until I get it in a nice spot. Both defense? No, maybe like one defense and three attack? Yeah, to really try to kill that troll guy above us. Oh, we don't have any backup plan. Nope. I'd really love to have like a good result for the gun, but that's pretty unlikely. Minus one attack. I mean, it's not bad. Okay, I did get to the evade and a shield, so that's cool. But yeah, I really want to get the bleeding or the... So I'm not going to... I'm not going to slot this in yet. But I will do three damage to this guy. So he's only got two life left. That should be pretty easy to take care of. Okay, so that was Gale. All right, then Figment. Let's get both of these going. I don't think... Yeah, like, nobody's got rain, so no one's going to hit him. So let's get these going and three attack all on the same guy to try to finish them off. The Gale hurt. Seems like the way to go, I think. And... Oh, okay. So we got a meh result for the Chrono Trigger, but good for the... Uh, well, actually, I guess they're about the same. And we got one bone, which is good. We can use charge up and two damage, which will finish off our first guy. So we'll spawn in one of the level ones in a little bit. And then he'll go and use charge up to get to time blip, which can change the round number, remember. And then be kind rewind could let him like reuse some skills. So that'd be cool. Although, no, I never got, I think it's waypoint or bar time. One of these green ones, I think, puts uh, exhausted dice back in there. Without that, that's not as useful. Okay, here's where things get a bit wacky. Oh, man, is Rock going to hit us? I thought they weren't. Maybe I meant to move them instead. Oh, well. So, let's see. Yeah, he's going to go here. <laughs> and, oh, I can, uh, let's, should I use this? Will things still work out the way I want them to? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that to run away. But Rock's still rolling uh, three of these. Oh, interesting. So that does nothing. And then, which one was that? Ah, Lava does plus one damage this round. Okay, so that's. Uh, not a big deal. Shouldn't really matter. Oh, no. Until the start of the rocks next turn. But still, again, I don't think it'll matter. All right. Now, here's where things get fun. So this guy uses reach on the closest opposing unit. And we can choose where they go. Um, so we want her to be here. Okay. And this guy's going to attack for three attack and one shield. And she can be hurt by other red units. So that's fine. Troll on troll action. Oh, man. Got a big defense. And two damage on roll. So she's down to six. Okay. And then roll wants to how did it work she wants the rock next to the strongest opposing unit in the shortest path possible so i think she can go like one two three 
right? It says she can move through opposing units, which does a damage to... That's right, he can get any shields and a damage to that guy. And then she's going to attack him and do her little merch die thing, too. Oh, she's doing three. Jeez, she's doing three damage to her brother. Sorry, y'all. She's got one shield herself. And what's that one? Bad to the bone. Until the start of rolls next turn, Gillock backup plans cost an extra bone. Okay, so lava's plus two damage. Backup plans cost plus one bone. All right, I mean, they definitely beat the crud out of each other, so I'm feeling good about that. I'm more worried about roll. Okay, we do have to spawn a new uh, guy on yellow. Oh, it's our old friend, the Bridge Troll. Bridge Troll, you basic. How you feel about that? And, okay, definitely gonna go for us right now and not roll. So round two, Gale, what you got? I mean, we could, like, pretty easily kill uh, Rock before he has a chance to recover. And then Roll will still go after this uh, guy, because he's still got more life than we do, and he can keep, like, reaching at her and stuff, so that should be cool. So yeah, okay, let's, uh, ooh, and we can do the, uh, the stupid uh, yo-yo thing. <laughs> so let's have a, uh, boom, move there. It's one of her five dexterity. And look at this, uh, Battle Yo-Yo says you can do it, it's like up to three times. Day Planner specifies usable no more than once on each of your turns. So this can definitely be used like multiple times. Oh my gosh. All right, so with Gale's five, I'm gonna try to get Arm Cannon going again. Well, the thing is, do I even like want to do a ton of damage? Not really, right? Because Roll is still the tougher one to kill. I just want to kind of kill Rock because he's annoying. So I don't know, let's do that. And got two more left, we'll do two basic attack dice. I want the self-coder in case you can like help me get a better result on that. I don't know. And then who am I attacking before I like use the yo-yo? I think, yeah, I'm going to say that I'm attacking rock. Okay, bro. All right, I got that crud one, but that lets me re-roll it. Although I would still only have like one chance. And three damage and a shield. Okay, so three damage to rock. Whoops. <laughs> Means that he's going to be dead in a second. Oh, wait, wait, crud, crud, crud. At the start of the turn, I should have done the uh, backup plan. Which meant I could have done one damage to the weakest enemy. Okay, so never mind, Rock, you're just dead. Because <laughs> that would have been one for you. And then I'd also get to give a bone to somebody. So let's give it to Gale. Oh, but we can't kill too many more trolls. Because they have to hurt Roll. Because nobody else really can. But this guy should be able to do a ton of that damage. Yeah. You know, where was I? All right, so I'll say I'm using this. And then this lets me reroll active dice. Okay, and actually, I'll put this in there too. And yeah, this one lets me reroll one of them. That one would have let me reroll all of them. And then I can keep the new result or the old result. So we'll see if I get something better. Burp. And nope. All right. <laughs> we'll just have the disable uh, one strength baddie. That's still cool. All right. And Figman, what do you want to do? Um, I don't want to time jump the green guy or hurt the green guy at all. Uh, so I guess I can like kill the bridge troll. Sure. He's not too important. Oh, I didn't even put a die in for him. He's automatically at the bottom since he's a weaker enemy. So yeah, it's going to do max basic stuff on bridge troll. He's not dead. He's got one left. It's like the first time Figment's actually rolled bones. And uh, if I wanted to use charge, I'd have to spend two bones to get one because of the currently active ability. So yeah, we're not going to do that. But okay, the bridge troll is barely alive. And then, okay, it's this guy. We can pick who he pulls in. And yeah, we can pick any, I think we can pick any adjacent. Yeah, we need to pick except it has to be lava. So whatever, we'll just get her over here. Yeah, please roll high with your three attack. Yeah, baby, <laughs> four. Oh, that's right. That guy recovers, but he's at full life. Yeah, he's definitely going to kill her. So four damage. She's down to three. Ha 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 ha. Murder each other and I shall pick up the leavings at the end. And then, yes, yeah, she's going to attack him back and also get some defense, maybe. Because he is the strongest with six, stronger than us. So she doesn't need to uh, roll crowd surf, whatever. No defense. Oh, what's that one? Oh, we have to discard loot. Oh, I've totally forgot about my, like, battle uh, yo-yo and stuff. All right, I don't know. Uh, Figment will get rid of the boots. Uh, I don't know, the day planner for Gale? <laughs> Whatever. I think we're going to be fine. But yeah, she did do one damage to him. So he's down to five, but he'll recover it in a second. Okay, and then finally, the bridge troll is going to attack me. Uh, Gale, I should say. Oh, got two defense, but didn't actually hit. And is taunting. Probably won't matter, but hey, we can mark it. Brings us to round three, uh, which means... Chrono Trigger does two damage to anybody. Yeah, whatever. We'll get rid of the bridge troll stuff. But then it's exhausted. Get another bone on the weakest gear lock. We're still both unhurt, so it's going to be Gale, I guess. Speaking of Gale, I mean, yeah, what are we doing? Oh, we should have another baddie, at least. Stench 2, Troll Drunkard. Basically, when he dies, you leave a stench die in his position, and it's like uh, does true damage if you move next to it or if you go on to it, and it takes down each round. That's pretty hilarious. Ooh, and look, he's... Going to go onto the lava to kill Roll. I mean, I don't even need to, like, interfere here, do I? Yeah. I, <laughs> I think Gale's just going to roll these three and some attack and see if she kills the bridge troll, which I think she probably will. And, yeah, she could do a lot of other stuff, but 
I don't know. We'll just get the uh, the bone. And yeah, we don't need to use any of that. This guy's already dead. Bye. And that's it for new enemies. So these friends are the only ones left. And Figment, what are you going to do? Uh, you can roll another defense. He can roll the flash rewind. Roll three attack, but maybe not use them. I guess he'll say he's attacking the stinky guy. All right, so we would... That's What is that? Healing them to two life? Yeah, and I can put it in like one of their dice. So I'll put it on Gale. And if somehow she died, she would come back to life. And then do I have to use the three damage? <laughs> I don't remember how that works. Well, sure. Whatever. Stinky. Get one hit out and then die of lava. All right, but now the real hero of this fight. Oh, that's right. Reach guy. Oh, crud. This isn't going to work out the way I thought. Reach guy always pulls the closest person who's not already adjacent. So he's going to pull uh, me over. But then he's going to attack me because I'm stronger. Ah, I might have done that wrong last time. Oh, no, I don't think so, though, because he did four. Yeah, he did three damage to her, getting her to uh, three. Unless she was already adjacent. But I think he pulled her. Ah, I don't remember. I'm sure you already saw a note either way. But oh no, Gale, uh, this is bad. Uh, crud, three damage. Gale's got two shields, but does take one. Oh, and he and he recovers, which is very important because now Roll still treats him as the strongest instead of attacking like Figment. And here we go. Um, okay, so backup plans cost more again. Got some shields and doing one damage to this guy. Oh, and crud, now that I'm here and I'm the closest, Stench guy's gonna come here and attack me. Let's roll a single die. I have no defense left. Oh, no. Okay, that takes us into round four. We got to figure this out, man. Because I don't want to have to do like three fatigue rounds of roll or anything. Yeah, I can't even get roll like on the lava by shooting her with like my push cannon or something because she always moves to the rock position nearest her target. Oh, wait, did I forget to fire Kronos here off all the way? I think I should have gotten one more bone. Either way, it's uh, exhausted. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I really just want Gale to get some defense, but not too much because I want her to be lower. So that uh, this guy will attack them again. So I'm going to get far enough away so that he'll still pull her in with reach. And then just uh, roll some defense. And actually, let's get... I guess it won't make a difference. I just want this guy to go towards uh, roll if possible. And then, yeah, I'm only going to use a single defense die and leave all the rest on the table. Uh, just so that I hopefully get down to three or two life. And these guys with their strongest attack preference will go for roll. And Figment, jeez, I don't really know. Hey, he's got good defense. I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to time jump. I think he's just going to skip his turn. Is that a thing? I don't know. Well, here, I guess at the very least he can like get farther away from the uh, drunkard guy. Okay, then this guy's going to reach. I'm going to have him put me here. And he heals back to six. Which does matter because we can pick who roll attacks between him and uh, Figment. Then he's still attacking Gale. Yeah, we're hoping it's kind of a big attack, right? We want him to... Okay, three damage. And after the one defense, Gale's down to two life. Definitely not the strongest. So now roll. Definitely still attacking this guy. Oh, that means we have to give up something? Now let's get rid of recyclables and recharge. I don't know. I forgot to even use my battle yo-yo. I think it'll all be easy once uh, roll's taken care of. And this guy does take two damage. All right, then here's a big one. So now, uh, equidistant... Oh, crud. He's going to attack Figment. I didn't go far enough. I should have gone here. Come on, Mike. All right, whatever. I mean, it's fine because the green guy will attack Roll on the next turn. That's like the most important one to me. So Figment uh, takes one defense. Okay. All right, almost to fatigue. Yeah, we're in round five first. And yeah, you know what? Gale will move here and roll two attack and two defense against Roll. Because it says Roll can't lose hit points, but we can take away that defense die so that uh, this guy can kill her. Or have a better chance of doing so, I should say. All right, so we definitely uh, got some stuff. But yeah, the damage just gets rid of the defense. And then in that case, we shouldn't need this guy. So we'll just have Figment move up and use uh, three attack and one defense to try to kill him. And yep, he's dead. Now he does leave a two-round stench in his wake. Uh, we can't move onto that space. And if gear locks move next to it, we take one true damage. But that shouldn't be a problem. All right, and here's a big one we've been waiting for. So he does still reach. Oh, crud. He's going to pull us. Well, no, I, we can pick two over there. So yeah, I'll have him reach Gale because they're equally close. But then strongest preference, attacks roll. Oh, and heals back to six, I should say. And come on, please just kill her. There we go. Get the heck out of here. All right, and with that, we can wrap things up pretty easily. We go into a fatigue round. Uh, Gale's down to one. Figment's down to five. And this guy does have a shield. Gail was being so patient, holding back. Let's go one, two, three, and four, five, six. Yeah, all attack and just blast this boy. All right. Not great damage, but probably still enough. Well, let's see. First, the initial two. So that'll be one, two. Then before we use these and push him, 
We're going to use Activate Turbine for five bones, and that will let Gale uh, do her attack stat again against an adjacent person. So that's, that's going to be enough, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Yep. Bye-bye, buddy. <laughs> and with that, we are done. Uh, maybe a longer video. We'll see how long it is once I edit it. But that was, again, just the base game of Unbreakable. And I like what I see so far. Rock and roll were a little bit annoying, but that's my own fault for not keeping rock alive longer to get more lava on the board. But I definitely like the new like lava rock elements and want to see some of the uh, tyrants that leverage that even more. And Figment, I feel like I barely scratched the surface with. Um, like I didn't get into his the rest of his greens or any of his blues, but I, I like what I saw so far. Lots of cool abilities. And Gale's pretty fun. I loved the uh, the arm cannon track, but yeah, I mean, like making her into a tank with like a lot of the defensive skills should be pretty neat. So yeah, definitely excited to dig into this one, uh, the campaign mode in it, maybe some of the new gear locks. Uh, and again, Chip Theory sent me all this stuff, so thanks for the review copy. We hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments how you're doing with Unbreakable. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.